Hey, what's up? It's episode 6. This time we're talking about ocean transport. Last video we did air transport and now we're doing ocean transport. For the last video in the air transport, we were looking a lot at the movement of people because it's expensive to move cargo uh, on an airplane. This time uh, with ocean transport, we're going to look at the movement of goods and materials instead of people. Um, why are we doing that? Because for the most part, uh, Ocean transport, if you're moving people, it's just for cruises and things like that. You're not actually going around the planet to, to transport people anymore. So um, I just want to show this video quick. This is a video that shows ship traffic of major international shipping. And the, the real deal is that most of the cargo that is moving is, you know, is cargo. It's not people. So these ships that are moving around the planet, they're huge, massive cargo ships. And... Uh, and yeah, so you can watch this. That's pretty cool. You can check out where all the ships are going. But I got lots of links. I'm going to try and get through to them. I got mad links for you, and we're just going to get right into it. So uh, this is the Geography of Transport Systems website for maritime transport, and I just want to highlight one specific thing that they say way down in the middle here. Um, basically, with the, regards to the IB syllabus, sorry, you got to go here. Uh, it talks about the relative change in the speed and capacity. We're going to mostly talk about the capacity because for the most part, speed has actually stayed the same since 1970. It hasn't increased a whole lot as a result of the, um, well, it says right here, because of um, uh, prices in, in, in fuel. So they're trying to reduce fuel consumption, and so they slow steam, which means that they can be more efficient when they move across the ocean in their uh, in the cargo ships. So... That's what they're doing. Anyways, most of these links that are across the top here that I'm going to get to right now are along the right side of this screen. You can also find them in the um, in the video blog uh, link that will be in the description below. All right, so the first one, it just shows the major um, transport, uh, transport lanes for shipping. You'll notice that the red... Uh, circles are major choke points. They're called choke points or passage points or, you know, passages. And that's uh, important for to, to, to understand where the ships, ships are coming and going. And um, the yellow is just secondary choke points or, or primary passage, excuse me, secondary passage points where ships are moving in and out of. All right. Um, I just want to show this map real quick because this shows landlocked countries. Landlocked countries, uh, they have a distinct disadvantage because they're oftentimes um, not able to participate in world trade as readily as other countries that are on the ocean. And so I just want to show that because there's quite a few countries here that you know have a distinct disadvantage in that they don't have any um, you know connection to the ocean. Oftentimes they have to go through neighboring countries in order to get access to the ocean. Okay, this shows world tonnage uh, by cargo vessel type, and you'll notice that oil tankers and dry bulk take up the vast majority, and that it's increased over the time since 1970, as far as the total uh, millions of, of tons. Okay, this here shows the evolution of container ships from 1956. Um, the TEU is a, they call it a 20-foot equivalent unit, which is a, your typical container that goes on those container ships. Um, back in the day, they could only hold about 500. The Panamax, which is sort of the classic standard, uh, can hold 4,000. And now we're getting up to triple E's that can hold 18,000 of these containers, which is pretty ridiculous. If you see these boats, they're just massive. They're, they're absolutely enormous. And they seem to be getting bigger and bigger. Now, the, the problem with this is the reason that it's called the Panamax is because these ones that can hold 4,000 is... Uh, the ports and the, the choke points and the canals and things can only accommodate certain size ships. And so they have to, uh, you know, they have to modify their ports, modify their, their canals because the ships are too big. And so um, it's interesting to see the development of these ships and how the, the ports are changing. So these triple E's, like there's only a couple ports on the planet that can handle these, these ships. All right, here's the change in the overall size of the, uh, the container ships over time. You'll notice Panamax is down here at 4,000, and now the triple E class way up top at 18,000. And that's TEU, which is 20, um, 20 foot equivalent units. Uh, all right, so 
this is a pretty interesting graph. This shows changes over time from 1995 to 2012 in the flows of uh, cargo. And you'll notice that there's far more um, cargo ships carrying weight leaving Asia and heading for North America than vice versa. And uh, it's because China has become the factory of the world and the North Americans um, are buying all of the things that the Chinese are producing. You'll notice that Asia to Europe is also um, highly uh, unbalanced uh, if you look at the difference between Europe to Asia and it's the same thing. Europeans also buying Chinese goods and, and Asian goods in general from Vietnam, the Asian tigers, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, uh, Singapore, so on and so forth. Okay, again, sorry, increased over time. You'll see this uh, this one dip here, financial crisis 2009. Anyways, getting into registered world fleet number of ships, you'll notice that they're increasing over time. This is the number of ships here, average tonnage um, and gross tonnage in thousands of tons, hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of tons. Okay, um, international seaborne trade and export of goods also increasing over time. A bit of a dip here because of the 2009 financial crisis. And then last couple of things, okay, because I just want to get through this quick. This is a really cool website. This shows actually the biggest container ports in the world. And you can zoom in and, like, you know, check them out. Super cool. Whoops. Um, and it's really neat to be able to see, you know, where the, the, the ships are pulling into port. So Shanghai is the largest in the world. Singapore has one of the largest in the world. And you can, you know, check out all the boats that are important things. Um, check out the rest of the the land in and around the the port. So I thought that was pretty cool. You can actually zoom right into these containers, these individual containers. It's pretty neat. All right, so it goes one through twelve and even further from that page. Lastly, how big can container ships get? Well, if you want to know, you can read this website, um, this web page from the BBC, and find out. Again, here's the similar image that we saw before. They're getting massive. They're getting absolutely huge because. As far as globalization goes, you know, moving goods across the, the planet with the most efficiency as possible is, you know, that's part of globalization. And so I hope this video has helped and I'll be back in the next episode.